This is Greg Vincent here with AgWeb. I'm talking to Marty Klinker, a farmer and rancher from Fairfield, Montana. And Marty, we're here at the Farm Journal Forum, but um, a lot of talk about the MF Global situation and what's going on there. First of all, just tell us about the MF Global's bankruptcy impact on your business. Uh, I had two hedging accounts, two different business entities, farming entities, that were frozen uh, in this bankruptcy proceeding. My associate account got pulled into the bankruptcy proceeding. Okay, um, so what does that mean? It's frozen. What happened? When uh, NF Global uh, took money out of our associated accounts, put it in their house accounts, and then bet it in, in bad investments, mm -hmm. caused MF Global to go bankruptcy. In that bankruptcy proceeding, or when, it was, when MF Global was ushered into bankruptcy, the uh, CFTC also allowed the segregated accounts to go into bankruptcy. Thus, the, the segregated accounts are under the, the hold of the bankruptcy trustee. And the bankruptcy trustee has frozen all assets. So this is your money, but you can't touch it? This is my money, and I can't touch it. It's also the ethanol plant's money and the grain elevator's money and everybody else that, that backs or, or utilizes markets for production agriculture or, or bringing markets to market. So when you are, are looking at this, um, and you're out here in D.C. talking to your representatives and some of the representatives of the Ag Committee, what kind of things are you hearing from them? Are you getting any satisfaction? You know, they're, uh, uh, Mr. Bacchus, Senator Bacchus, Senator Stavenow, Senator uh, uh, Pat Roberts from Kansas, uh, all of them have a very good grip on it. I think there's uh, um, the uh, Senator Donaldson has a very good grip on it, or, or legislator Donaldson has a very good grip on this as well. There's, there's some anger and some upbreaks that, that, that this can happen and then people hide behind the, the uh, obscure rules. Uh, but still the fact is they took money out of a segregated account and put it in their own house account. I never gave MF Global access to my accounts. I'm sure most other people did. We didn't choose MF Global. We started with an initiating broker. And what position, uh, that essentially puts you in a position where you're an unsecured creditor now because the money you have in those accounts is actually through your broker. Through our initiating broker, that's correct. If it if it is in fact legitimate that segregated accounts can remain in the bankruptcy, then then we are on an unsecured creditor. But you know, it's just just like having a house cleaner come through and steal out of your you know the, the MF Global got access to those accounts by a vein of their business being an FCM and in, in collecting money by transacting. Uh, positions that anybody that had a CIA account wanted to have transacted. MF, MF Global got a fee for doing that. That gave them the access point to the accounts. Mm -hmm. Then from that access point, they took money out, put it in their account, and then they lost it. So I guess my I don't feel as an asset holder that I should be subject to the bankruptcy proceedings. MF Global has $51 billion in assets. $49 billion in liabilities, but $51 billion in assets. Every dollar that they have should first go to pledge back the theft that they that they they've had of, of taking money out of the segregated accounts. So, what's your big fear about that? I, I know you've got some specific fears about what this could mean. It's and it's more than what actually is a substantial amount of money that you're missing out on, but it's it's deeper than that, I guess. Yeah, you know, um, this system of segregated accounts. You know, CFTC requires segregated accounts as. To uh, the, and those segregated accounts eliminate counterparty risk of, of the person that has the other side of the position failing. So a grain elevator um, buys grain from me, the farmer, and turns around, sells on the futures board, posts, posts money, puts money in their segregated account, and that eliminates if the, if the grain elevator goes broke, that the, the other person that, that was on the other side of the, of the trade doesn't lose. So. Well, segregated accounts, if, if the concept of segregated accounts is violated, it underpins, it, under, it might pull the linchpin underneath the market as a whole. I mean, it's not just agriculture that's affected. The banking industry, the several ag bankers um, have operating loans, or margin operating loans with, with farmers or with elevators or ethanol plants or feedlot operators that are specifically for margin money. And they make, and some of those are extremely large, you know, five to thirty million dollars, or maybe even, I'm sure larger even than that. If the bank starts looking at this, and there are, there's some bank bankers saying, hmm, gee whiz, is that a very good risk? If, 
if we if we have uh, thirty million dollars tied up and the elevator loses you know twenty percent of that overnight or thirty percent of that overnight, it would yeah. tip them over. We the bank would lose all their money. I mean, the, the third level of counterparty risk that has now entered the marketplaces is unacceptable. It just it doesn't fit in. It's like square peg trying to fit into a round hole. We need to talk about that with your banker. How has your banker reacted to this? Are they allowing you to still count that money that is rightfully yours and maybe or maybe not there? Are you still counting that as an asset, or how are you? You know, we haven't had these discussions. Uh, Montana Grain Growers just had their meetings um, last week, and there's a lot of bankers at, that, at those meetings, and this discussion came up, and, and you could sense the nervousness. There is nervousness, obviously there's nervousness. 